so we will make sure that that happens. Uh, one last thank you. I want to thank the gentleman to my right, Mr. Lamb, for keeping me in the loop uh, while I was home or in the hospital, wherever I was. Uh, hard to keep track. But um, at any rate, I thank you, Tom. And I also want to thank my assistant, Ms. Demetrio, who, uh, who took the time not only to be in constant contact with me, but also uh, took a couple of runs to my home to drop off papers to sign and things like that. So again, thank you, everyone. I'm happy to be back. And uh, here's to a great school year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pacifica. All right, so uh, next part of the meeting, we're going to go to public discussion. Uh, please limit your time to three minutes and be conscientious of your time. Let's be civil. Uh, board members, please refrain from all comments during the public session and follow Robert's rules. Further, the board will not be answering questions directly. Uh, we will all be taking notes, and if we have an answer, they will be offered at the end of the public session, or one of us will get back to you um, ASAP. So please state your name in town prior to speaking. Uh, can I get a motion to open up to public discussion? So moved. So that's Mr. Carolyn and Mr. Kinney. Okay, so. Uh, Before you move to. Uh, we already opened. I asked if. Or something that just happened in the audience. You can vote, and, and maybe I can be recognized after the vote. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, so um, please state your name. Hold on, let me just double check your time. Oh, we have to roll. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry, Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Fortunato. Yes. Ms. King. Yes. Mr. Kenny. Yes. Ms. Kulakortis. Yes. Mr. Seda Ducato. Yes. Ms. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Buda. Yes. Okay, so uh, we're starting at 10:22. Can um, I be recognized? We have to go to public. I'll recognize you after the public session's over. Okay. No. But uh, can I make a point of order then? Sure. Uh, so at the beginning of the meeting, you announced that recording should be um, done in the front row. And um, I did receive com complaints from many people in the community that they themselves were being recorded when they give comments. And um, those videos were being used against those persons. And I don't want their right to participate in a public meeting to be chilled in any way. So could I? Respectfully request that the cameras be aimed at the board instead of the audience. So I guess the point of order then would be that the, uh, the board is being recorded and not members of the public. That would be my point of order, but perhaps I'm mistaken. Maybe that wasn't your intention in the announcement. Excuse me. You're not speaking. Um, Okay, so Mr. Lamb, do you want to comment uh, on that? I, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer. I'll, I'll comment, comment as best I can. Our policy says that the meeting uh, can be recorded by the public. It does not distinguish between the board members or public comment. I would think public comment is part of the meeting, and it's, and it's the public's right to record that part. Uh, Mr. Harrod, do you have anything to add? Mr. Harris is uh, our district attorney. Is his mic on? Yeah. Is, your mic is on? it on? Yeah, yes, I think it's, it's on. on. Okay, great. It's the ability to record a public meeting. Can you pull Speak the mic up a little bit more? It's the ability to record a public meeting. So at a public meeting, it would be the trustees engaging in discussion. And since you do provide public comment at a board meeting, that would be considered part of a public meeting. So I don't think it would be in violation of the policy to have that recording. So I, I'm, I didn't hear you. Yeah, I, hear I, would, I would not conclude the violation of the policy if the public video is a meeting and it's part of the video of the meeting would be the presentations made by members of the public because that's part of your meeting. Okay. All right. So then the ruling would be uh, uh, I, I, either we would have, the ruling would be that they could 
videotape someone as long as they're in the uh, area that we prescribe. Okay, I just wanted to um, bring, so bring it to your attention. You can't videotape um, in this section, but you can videotape behind the uh, um, yellow chain, which I think is plastic. Um, so it's not actually a chain. Um, so I'm going to start at 10:25. Okay. So uh, name in town. Hi, Kim Ange from Franklin Lakes. Mr. Ashika, I'm so happy to see you back and looking so well. Welcome back. Um, I have a question about something that was actually already passed tonight, E2 on the agenda. There's a sidebar agreement between the Ramapo Indian Hills Regional High School District Board and the Ramapo Indian Hills Education Association, so I'm just wondering what that is. Um, and the first read for policy 164801, um, Mr. Budo said before um, that the first read of this policy at the last meeting I believe you said had so many revisions from the administration that it's another first read tonight. So I'm just wondering, were any of the parents' comments and revisions taken into account? Because it looks like a completely different policy than what we saw the first time. Um, and Ms. Sullivan, I believe, said something about a student be able, being able to have an exception provided by a medical professional. I don't see that anywhere in this first read of the policy. I understand, like, it's, you know, if you have an IEP or 504 plan, but not every student that has a medical condition or an anxiety disorder would have an IEP or a 504. So shouldn't there be something in there that says um, they can have a letter or documentation by a licensed physician, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or I guess any other number of medical specialists? Um, and I had a couple of questions about the committee reports. Um, Ms. Cortis, I think you said um, it was discussed at your communications committee about the special education report being posted on the district website. So I'm just wondering if you could let us know when, what date that will be posted. Um, Ms. King, I'm, I'm curious, when was the road forward title added into your committee title? Um, also, I think you briefly mentioned that you're following the communicable disease policy for contact tracing and quarantining, which those are two topics that are major, major issues. So it's not, I can't imagine it's something that's just mentioned briefly with no details. And there is currently no requirement or mandate in the state of New Jersey to contact trace and or quarantine. Um, and then Ms. Sullivan, um, because you're the chair of the policy committee, this would be a question for you. Um, that contagious disease policy, and I know I've mentioned this before, hasn't been updated since 2013. So do we have an idea as to when that will be updated? And when it is, will it include details specifically related to COVID-19 and the fact that there is no requirement or mandate this year to contact trace or quarantine? So I'd like those questions, if possible, to be answered tonight so the public can hear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next. Margaret Bennett, Franklin Lakes. I'm no constitutional lawyer, people taking a shot at home, uh, but I know you can record public meetings. And what just happened there was a really good example of what I'm hearing is happening in the policy committee. There's a lot of word salad. You got, you had a first reading on a mask policy that once, once I took a casual look at it after the meeting, saw it was a disaster. Then you went and tonight voted on um, policies that you didn't see. Not only should you see them, you should see highlighted versions of how they're changed if they're revised. Um, by the way, Mr. Lamb, I believe that cannabis did not pass. You are correct. I am correct. Uh, four does not make a majority. Um, you have, somebody has to get on the phone tomorrow with the New Jersey School Boards Association and stop it. Being the Board of Ed is a meeting of the public, a public Board of Ed meeting is a meeting of the board in public. 
to do, conduct the business of the board. It is not an individual board member's TV show. There are literally people right now watching on YouTube taking shots Everybody, every time someone says she's an adjunct faculty member. I mean, we, you, you can control that because what's happening is a tremendous amount of misinformation and it's coming from the board table. Matt Lee, or one of the lawyers at the New Jersey School Board, Mr. Hara, Mr. Fogarty, will teach you how to do that. It's very simple. You motion. You make a motion and somebody else seconds it. The purpose of the meeting is one purpose. It's for the business of the schools not somebody's personal agenda to inflate themselves because it's really getting in the way and it's getting in the way of your policies. So any policy that comes before you right now, you should not be allowing any committee to meet with administration four times in one month. Go ahead and ask Mr. Fogarty's firm about that. That's bordering on an ethics violation. You should refuse that, Dr. Rashika. You're being too kind. It's, a, it's an abuse of their time. By the way, a board member is not allowed to go see for themselves how a, board, um, how a school is and how happy the children are. That's an ethics violation. Doesn't want to hear it through the administration? Well, tough luck, because the, the school ethics commission will tell you that's how you have to hear it. You don't go waltz around the schools to see things for yourself because you don't run the schools. And it's very different, writing policy versus writing curriculum. Mrs. You Bennett, don't write you. curriculum. Time is up. You do write policy. Good evening, all. Yes. Naaman, Naaman Town. Erinda Kikot, Oakland. Um, just a couple of very brief observations, um, actually comments on my observations on over the last three meetings that I've attended. Um, I just want to thank Ms. Sullivan for your due diligence and research into each topic that you discuss. I find you to be very well spoken and very respectful toward all the members and the public. I wish everyone on the board behaved the same. Also, thank you Mr. Ruda as well for being a, a fair voice of reason. I'd also like to thank Ms. LaForgia for letting the parents have a voice more so than I find them coming out of anybody else. I also find it very interesting how some people from the audience and the public came out here earlier tonight, Virgil signaling, telling us how we should all be so very tolerant of one another, all inclusive, non-discriminatory, non-divisive, and so on and so forth. Yet they have no problem pushing their own uninformed opinions on the rest of us while totally discriminating against some that have exemptions as provided by, provided by the same exact executive order, 251, that they quote from. But only the parts that benefit them, I find. I wish I was surprised that people lack the courage to do their own research and reading, yet sadly here we are. That seems to be a theme. And just for the record, a recommendation is not law. Thank you. Thank you. Can you just give me your name? And, excuse me. Can you just give me your name? I didn't catch your name. Can you spell that? K. K. O. T. O. T. Okay. Thank you. 